I'm starting another pour. I'm going to tidy up a little bit first and get ready. And then I have to prepare the molds. Uh, so this little workstation here is a bit messy from earlier because I had to let things gel and cure before I could, you know, rip everything off. So mm -mm. let's clean up my tools. So I'm going to demold the one that I poured earlier um, in the stream, what, a few hours ago. Um, that was another crinoid for TK. And this is another crinoid for KC. And then I have two more to pour after that. Uh, We'll see how far I get today. I don't think that's ready to clean. I have to wait for it to completely cure. Too short, I need a longer breather tube. There we go. Right, there is absolutely no way that I can pull that out, so I have to do my um, unclogging trick, which actually works this time. <laughs> Right, pliers. Okay. That colour palette was um, from Opium, it's kind of a co dark copper gold mix, it comes out kind of a reddish, um, reddish coppery colour. Ooh. I'm getting food coma. God, it's so difficult to get off because it's like sticky snot. <laughs> okay. I need to put gloves on. Hmm. Okay. Let's do that before I get too mucky. Mucky much. Pop this in here. Mm. 
Nah. Nah, gloves, gloves, gloves. So what have we got this time? I've got crinoid, coralline, bell. Okay. So coralline is the colour palette I'm going to do today, or this afternoon. Uh, Right, let's get you onto my perspective. Let's turn you around. Haha. Mm hmm. Okay, so, um, Pigments, pigments, where's my, oh, I put my tray over there to dry off, didn't I? I've taken it out of the rotocaster, uh, and I've put it on fast cure now, so it's all wrapped in heaters, so I'll be able to demold that in a minute. Right, Coraline colour palette. Hee <laughs> hee. This is my fun door. Right, Coraline needs pearl. Gold. Okay, let's have some of these new ones. Oh, those are too brown. That one's a nice one. Oh, I don't have that already, do I? Let's check. Mm. is more more pinky yeah okay I'll go for this one right I think that's the colors I want today for Coraline okay Let's see what cups I've got left
I hope I'm going to have enough silicon in this next batch. Uh, oh my god, dead ants. <laughs> oh, okay, I have to clean those. Uh, have I got any left in here that I can just pull out? Ah, yes, there are a couple. These are easy. I'll clean these up. So I'll put these in the tub to clean later. I think that's all I need actually. This one had gold in it. Um, This is not a good example, actually, of what it actually looks like when it's finished because it's not properly mixed. I think I was only using this as a bit of touch-up glaze. So, okay, I'll, I'll leave that for the next bunch that I have to do. Chuck in, okay. Mm. So all this is cured, kind of the worst thing about this is all the little bits, they tend to sort of fly about and pick up static. So it's actually better to leave the cups kind of with a layer of silicon on, then you can rip it all off because if you try and get these little bits off like I'm doing now, you risk getting these small silicone snotty particles like stuck to everything but I just wanted to see if any of this was uncured because um, a good hint that maybe my gloves are the wrong type or my new batch of gloves are not working well with the silicone is if when I finished and the cups are kind of gooey because anything that touches my gloves if it stops the curing process it will be all over the cups and I know that I haven't got any quality issues like that popping up so far. It has happened with some experiments before, but not since I discovered that it doesn't work with all gloves. Because obviously if I'm, if I'm pressing something into the mould with my finger, that bit of silicone that I've pressed it won't cure, and I'll just end up with a gooey mould. Right. Oh, spatula. Nope, that's not it. I'm going to look for my spatula. I made a mess. I don't know where it is. I used it earlier, so... Hang on. I hope it didn't end up in the trash again. Oh, yeah, here it is. Oh, my other cups. <laughs> I put them next to the heater to cure off quick. So let me just check the spatula a second. Yeah, so this is the silicone that I used earlier and it's completely cured. And there's no sticky residue on the spatula, so that's good. So when I come to demolding it, there shouldn't be any problem. white. I think I actually need two cups of that. Pop you down a bit. Is that better? Yeah. Mm -hmm. I'll do the gold next actually. Start with the lightest, go to the darkest.
So I'm going to saturate the gold quite deeply because the white to an extent can be a little bit translucent, a little bit desaturated, but not the gold. So I'll see if I'll just use That's a lot. <laughs> yeah, I think that's going to be very gold. <laughs> oh, I do need another white, actually. It's three cups white, one copper. Hmm. The strange thing about adding glitter to the pigments um, is that it actually changes the behavior of the silicone because now you've got these plates inside the silicone mixture. So when the molecules stretch out, they've got plates that they have to kind of wrap around and it actually makes the silicone a little bit stiffer. So that's a really funny... Uh, what do you call it, um, change in property by adding glitter. The particulate of the flakes is enough to change its behavior from an elastomer into a composite. Whereas the fine particles like this, they are like nano, uh, nano sized, but Mm, I must be getting low on this pigment. Mm. Okay. I'm not low on it. I've got loads of it. <laughs> but it's just this bag. That's fun, isn't it? Mmm. Mmm. I like that. Mm, mm, mm. Okay. So let's just get rid of these for a second. And once again, I'll stick them in easy access because if I do any touch ups later, I'll, I'll get these out. Um, Touch-ups is really when I have to trim it and if I notice there's any thin spots or any porosity, any surface porosity or what else? Yeah, where I've cut it and there's raw silicone edge, I, I would go to seal it with a bit of mixed paint colours just to help minimise bacterial aggression. And I usually provide a care, I actually provide a care kit with every Medusa anyway to combat that naturally without uh, weakening the silicone itself. So, before I get on to mix this, I have to prepare the moulds. So, um, I'm going to use the bell, I just started stapling it together and I've done the release agent and everything on it so I'll finish stapling it. Mm -mm. Oh, it's 
It's hard to grip these things with gloves on. I have not actually listened to my own stream, so I can never tell if you can hear any of the music. I hope not, because it will just be, you know, an annoying tick tick in the background. Okay, so I think that's enough, but just because I've got a few extra here, I'll, I'll stick a couple more in. There, so hard to grip these with gloves on. When I first started going live, I went overkill with the protective agent because, uh, the protective clothing because I've been working with silicon every day for the last six months and I developed a bit of an allergy to it and every time it touched my skin I ended up with dermatitis and it spread to my face. So I was like, okay, even if I wear a mask, at least it's covering it up. And I started wearing masks, hoods, arm sleeve covers, everything because this stuff gets everywhere and if my hands are sticky, it transfers to switches. It transfers to all the clamps, it transfers to everything, and it never cures, and I end up transferring it everywhere. So when I finish, I have to, you know, go everything with alcohol and try and get rid of as much residue as I can. Right, so now I'm going to mount bell and the retort stand, and... Oh, I need to check the height. Yeah, it should be the same. Actually, it should be the same, but I think what I'm going to do now is demold this. Mm-hmm. Oof, that's hot. Oof. Yep, she's definitely cooked. <laughs> okay, so if that's cooked, great. I'll demold this one now. You get to see this one now. Where's the other pliers? Oh God, get rid of this noise. What is this? Some horror track. Uh, Stranger Things, I bought Stranger Things, the, the score, because I really enjoyed that. Ooh, it took me back. Those days of playing when you were young, in the local woods, if there were any. There aren't now, are there? It's all, um, all suburbanized. It's just so I can reach it. Okay. Where's the green pliers gone? Mm -mm 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 -mm. Green pliers, got to be around there somewhere. Really need to tidy this place. Always do, but never seem to manage to. Okay, they're green. Ah, oh, there they are. Uh -huh. Let's put that back where it's supposed to be. And that.
This one's going to be absolutely fun to pull out because she's a gorgeous colour. I can see how she's turned out already. It's, I'm really pleased with this. Oh, I need my turn. So, first of all, I have to... Let's zoom in a little bit. I've had an idea to upgrade all my moulding uh, tool, tooling, um, but in order to do it, there's some more machinery I have to buy. Uh, so I've decided that I'm kind of fed up of making these silicone moulds, which are kind of bulky and heavy, and they go milky after some time. You can't see through them. So I'm going to buy a vacuum forming machine and make thin plates of um, like acetate that staple together and use that as my new mould structure. So I, I've got to buy this machine and it's one that dentists use for making dental plates for, you know, um, yeah, dental plates like Invisalign and stuff like that. So I'm really looking forward to that. <laughs> I've got to buy that machine. I found it and I was like, ah, oh, it's a perfect size. I can make, you know, more plates for my moulds and they would just be so much clearer, so much more quality control. <sighs> I mean, I've done what I can reasonably well with the materials, but I always see... Okay. Uh, come on. Got it. Well, that's the final one around the top. Sorry if the camera's jiggling around a bit. You're on my shoulder and I'm trying to stay still. <laughs> mm. <laughs> Not working. <laughs> These are nasal speculum. Um, so I've got a bit of a collection of these for demolding and went to the doctor not long ago about a chronic nasal sinus infection that I've had for years and it gets worse every winter and he looked up my nose shoved one of these up it <laughs> I'm familiar with it because I got so many of these lying around for demolding and he said to me oh my god your nose is disgusting Honest doctor, that's nice. <laughs> Wasn't very pleasant about it. So apparently it's just something where I have dry sinuses that don't produce enough moisture of their own. So every winter when it gets drier, my sinuses crack and infection creeps in. So I end up with a permanent cold that never goes away. So he prescribed me some stuff to just like mush up my nose with cotton buds and it was really funny because <laughs> all I have to do is three times a day. Look at that. Look at that. This is amazing. Uh, oh my god, there's ants in the sink. Little bastards. Sorry. There is no food in here but I think they're attracted to the smell of silicone because it seems to attract them, the raw silicone. Right, okay, you're all going to die. It's not as bad as what it was the other day. I mean, there was a whole river of them the other day. Come on. 
black river of ants and they walked right into this puddle of silicone that leaked out of the drum where it, it tipped itself from its slow weight. I, I didn't realise when I tipped it back I hadn't tipped it the whole way and the silicone was still clinging to the sides and as it dropped slowly down the side of the drum it tipped itself over and poured everything out all over the floor. So <laughs> I had to um, rub everything down with catalyst and let it cure and then rip it up. And this river of ants came into it and just all died, got stuck in it. <laughs> it's really funny. Well, not the ants, but I was like, wow, that's an awesome ant trap. Okay, so I've taken, well, I might as well take both of them off because I'm going to need my hands to feel this next bit. Right, okay, so what I'm going to do now is use soap to lubricate and... just get in there. I have to go all the way around. Like that. Go all the way around. All this flashing gets trimmed off later. But, you know, I need a little bit more soap. Okay. I just release it all the way down. Aha, uh -huh. okay. Just keep going round. Oh, you lost the view. It's, it's difficult for me to keep an eye on two things at once. So I just have to go right down until I feel if any flashing has caught on the inside of the mold and just gently peel it away. And then, right, so that should be able to release now. So let's see. I just push it down. There we go. And then my egg should just pop out. Oh, like that. Okay. And that's amazing. It's thin, it's soft, and it's springy. Amazing. Okay, so next, um, rinse this off. You can see there's translucency. Uh, there's translucency where the light is coming through. That's not a flaw. It's not a hole. It's just the silicone has. Um, it's not fully saturated, so there's some translucency with the silicone and. Okay, right. Now let's lift it off. Okay. Mm -hmm. So this is crinoid unicorn egg for a person called TK. Just call them TK. Ants go away. Come on. Yesterday, one crawled up to my armpit and bit me in the armpit. I don't think they bite, it's just that whatever they sting with, it really stings. So, back to what I was doing. I've got a bit of a backache from having you on my shoulder and I don't know why, like how that could transfer. So I'm just going all the way around first of all to release it. And this is, um, I don't know what you call them.
and I just work my way in. I have to take my time with this and I don't want to speed it up because um, this mould is extremely hard and full of detail and it, it's like glass. So you can't do anything suddenly because I'll either tear the product or tear my hands up, which I've done several times. Um, and it's, it's so sharp, it cuts me like, uh, like a paper cut. No blood, you know, it's really horrible. I don't know if I've got you in the right position, so I'm gonna do what I have to do and then readjust the camera if I remember to look over. All the molds I make, I, I charge the same price for because um, the level of detail I go into, the, the effort I go into is the same. I'm, I'm not going to charge more for one that's popular or anything like that because it's, to me, it was all, they're all lovely and your, your choice is your choice. I don't want to sift, um, define which one's more valuable than the other. I am developing new designs and I'm taking a break this week to do that, to actually release some new stuff, hopefully this week. Um, so at the moment I have four designs of the Medusa and I'm launching another product very soon. So watch this space. And it's all silicone art you know it's all products that i make out of silicone and they're all very artisanal um i don't make solid castings solid core castings because anyone can do that you know i mean uh, if you've got a degassing machine um to draw a vacuum on this to get rid of the bubbles great I don't have a degassing machine and I prefer making unusual surface, surface products that um, change their properties when you know how to engineer their structures. So, and that is a complete different skill set that is, you know, <laughs> beyond, <laughs> um, beyond just, you know, sex toys or anything. And I love, I love looking at artisanal sex toys, but that's not what I'm, you know, everybody else can produce them and I don't really want to get into it because the market's out there, it's, it's done for that. So I'm just doing different things that have not been tried before. <laughs> Hmm. Not easy. It's beautiful. I mean, look at the detail. It's just amazing. It's, it's perfect. I can already see the detail in this. It's so amazing. I have to be really careful now because I've got my fingers in it and it can cut me. Right. <laughs> Someone said to me, wouldn't it be easier to put holes in, it, in the mold so that you can inject 
air or water into it to release it. And I can't because all the surface detail here is where I would have to drill the holes. And I can't disguise them then. I'd have more trimming to do. And the other thing is I found, I found trying to release silicone from this level of detail, it requires so much pressure on the syringe, I can't do it. I physically can't do it. I would need a machine to do it. And I don't trust, um, you know, not having the tactile control over anything. I need to feel everything that I'm doing because everything's so delicate. So. Okay, there she comes. Mm -mm 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 -mm. Can you see that? She's coming. Oh God, that sounds so wrong. She's coming. <laughs> She's coming. Oh my God. I'm gonna be careful with this last bit. Oh my God. There we go. Oh my God. I was like, every time I release one of these, I'm just like, just dumbfounded. I love it. I'm so proud of this. You can see. Oh my God. Oh my God. I'm in love. So here's another baby for TK, TK. I have to trim it. I have to trim out her hymen, <laughs> trim out her hymen. And yeah, she'll be on her way very soon. It's the weekend now, right? So, wow, wow. Anyway, get over yourself, Juliana. Um, my alien baby is going to be trimmed. So I'm just going to put her in a baggie for now. Let's zoom out. So I'm going to bag her up for now. Oh my God. I can't stop looking at her. She's just, oh my God. <laughs> I'm so proud of this one. Look at the detail. Oh my God. Look at that. This is really easy for me to trim. I just trim this flashing here, trim this flashing. And she goes through a final inspection and a good little test with the stretching to make sure that she's, you know, I'm so proud of her. Look, look at this, whack. Ah, oh, yeah, she's, she's gonna be fun. I love her, right. So that I'll put aside. I'll have a bunch of them to trim tomorrow. I'm gonna cast a few more tonight. Um, we'll see how far I get. Uh, right, oh, my crinoid mold. Here is my crinoid mold. And there's no debris. There's no moisture. So I'll spray this up and get her ready to do another one. <coughs> brush, where's my paintbrush? Hmm, no paintbrush. I don't know where it went. I need the paintbrush, where's it gone? Paintbrushes. I need paintbrushes, come on, come on, baby. Mm. I don't 
don't know why I lost it. Oop. Why is it I can never get a paintbrush out of these packets? Trash. So that crinoid was in what's called unicorn, which is a lavender, lavender lilac kind of lavender lilac and mauve. This one is going to be coralline. So, let's preheat the mold. Do, do, do. Right. Before I do that, I'm just going to check the height of the machine. Because it changes with every different mold or different attachment I use. So. See, this goes into here like this. Oh, it's going to be one of those, isn't it? Oh, there we go. So, I'm wondering if this sits up a little higher. Does it sit up higher? What the hell? Can't seem to... <laughs> Interesting. So I think I might have to trim. I have to trim something because it's not fitting. Maybe I haven't used this one on this mold together yet. Let's, let's see. Hmm. Let's see if it fits now. Oh, where'd it go? Mm -mm. Oh, it's in there. Dude, why aren't you going in? Ah, there. Now it's in. <laughs> so, that fits in like that. And there's enough clearance. Okay, so it is a fit, okay. So I'll leave that to preheat and flip this up again. Preheat. Right, for crinoid coralline bell, I think I'm going to need about 140 mils of 140 mils. So I hope I got enough. I'll have to use all of that. And I hope I don't have to... Oh, God, it looks like I will have to open up the new drum. Hmm, okay, let me... I'm not going to use this thing. I'm going to use a clean one. Okay, that one's clean. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to decant from one to the other, and it's all sticky, so I'm just going to get my gloves on now. So this is the remnant that I decanted out the last drum. 
<laughs> and when I decanted it out, that's when I left it, thinking it was empty and done. And it tipped itself over and leaked the rest all over the floor. Uh. Oh, I got a backache. I think I've been slouching too much. Ooh, spatula. This was the silicone I made that purple crinoid with. Um, and you can see it's, it's pretty strong. And this isn't the stuff that's even been baked. This is just straight out of the pot. And it's cured and it's pretty strong. So after it's been baked, it, that's called post-curing, it strengthens even more. And the remnants on this spatula aren't really going to come off. So let's see. Uh, actually, let's see how much I got in this. Because if I don't have to open up the other one, that'd be great. But if I do, oh well. There's a bit of debris in there. I'll have to just pick it out. I don't know where that fell from. Come on, out you come, big dollop. There is a, there is something there, isn't there? What is that? Did I get it? I think I did, I got it. <laughs> oh, there it is. I don't know what it is, but... Yeah, I'll have to open up the new drum. Aww. So if I need about 140, is there 20 more grams in here? No, there's not. matter how much I try and squeeze this pot, <laughs> it's not going to give me another 10 grams. Hmm. 
Wow, it's getting close. <laughs> Just winked out on me. Right. And then what I'll do is I'll wipe catalyst over the inside of this bowl to see what I can just cure off and save me from cleaning. And then, and then I'll get the alcohol on it. Okay, I think that's about as much as I can get out of here. Yeah. So I managed to do this without having to open up the second drum. Great. I think I can get away with this. Let's see. Okay. Um, so it is. We'll just zero it with this one. Zero. Zero. And then swap it. Okay. Oh my God, 138. Ah, okay, so I need 14s, 140, 150, 152. I need to take this up to 152. Okay, let's see if I can pour this. 152. <laughs> Look at that, I just did it. <laughs> Oh, cool. <laughs> right. Let's mix this. And... <sighs> it's um, starting to get a bit dark, actually. So I'll just bring the light in a bit. Yeah. Better. I normally end up working here often until midnight, sometimes one in the morning. Um, I have weird hours. <laughs> I tend to find that I can relax easier in the evening and then I end up go to sleep. And the weirdest thing is if I continue dreaming about trimming medusas. Because that's, that's the nightmare that I have, is trimming medusas. The less trimming I have to do, the better. If I have a lot of trimming to do, it carries over into my dreams. And I woke up in the middle of the night. And uh, yeah, I woke up in the middle of the night looking for where I dropped the Medusa in the dark, because I was trimming it in my dream, and I was like, lights are out. Where, where's my Medusa? Couldn't find it. <laughs> I didn't take it to bed with me. Um, right, let's see. Put you down like that. Let's make me zoom you in a little bit. Oh, 
I don't know if you're in frame, sorry. I'm concentrating on what I'm doing and I tend to lose track of the camera. I've got to be a bit more quicker about this because I don't have much time before it gels, you know? And then it gets too hard for me to inject. Uh. So this method of working for me, I find really relaxing. And, and then the excitement is when I'm designing something new, which I hope to start this week. I, I've had ideas brewing for a long time and I haven't had a chance to start them because I've been so busy pouring. Um, and I'm making myself take a break for a week so that I can do some new design work. And what I tend to do is I make originals out of polymer clay and thermoplastics and you know all kinds of different techniques. Um, it's sculpting, carving, forming, melting, you know, I, I do everything. And then those originals, some of them are really fragile, so they don't survive the molding process, you know, being turned into a mold. So I keep all the bits. I keep everything, even when it gets destroyed. Because hmm. Okay, that's better, isn't it? I just realized you know, it wasn't in frame. Oh, God, my back is killing me. So each one of these I treat as art. I'm I'm making art and it's it's pretty deep for me personally. Something that I'm celebrating and if people are appreciating it and they're buying it, I'm just like I'm so happy because this is healing me. You know, being able to give someone else um, the opportunity to start healing um, yeah it's really meaningful for me okay I'm just dumping the entire white into this one because uh -huh. and then I'm going to dump in the copper. I've actually put you on close-up lens. I don't know if this is better, but this is equivalent to like directly what I'm seeing instead of like Oh, that's such a lovely color.
Okay, I'm going to put half in here. All right. I don't want the copper to be too rich of a colour. So I'm going to dump another half of white on top of that. I'll call it white, but it's actually pearl. I, I don't know if you can see it. This is this range, the pearlescent hues that are coming through. There's blue and green in there. Okay, I would like to change this awful, god-awful music because I bet it's Stranger Things again. Yep, it is. Okay, that's better. Ooh. I love Stranger Things, but not all for the entire soundtrack. I just wanted that one piece of music and I ended up buying the whole LP. Okay, so put half in of the white. And then dump all of the gold in in one go. trying to get it off the bottom. I don't know if you can see that. It just doesn't want to come off. It's really hard to mix. Okay, let's dump all of this in. Maybe it'll be more saturated towards the bottom. Ah, that's better. I've got it. Yeah, that last bit at the bottom. But that's all right because if there's a variation of saturation going through the mixture, it, it adds, it actually adds to it. So you get to see the veining more. Okay, then the other half of the white. Oh, sorry, I didn't realize you were missing. Ah, crap, I got it everywhere. <laughs> The rest of the copper. Mm -hmm. Okay, and then the remainder of the white. Oh, crap. <laughs> Oh god, I keep doing that. Oh. I don't want to breathe these particles in. I should be wearing a mask. OK. 
Okay. That is plenty. Okay. Let's get the plunger in. Oh my nose. Okay. So I'm watching the breather hole. Got it. So that's 130 mils. Wow. Okay. Uh, and she come. Mm, yeah. Right. Put this here. Where's my pick tool? Okay, because I'll need that. Um, um, Okay, just in case I get sticky, I have a sheet ready at this ready. Okay then. Right, I'm gonna try and keep you in frame. Um, I have to work pretty fast on this. Okay. Okay, so this is the bell. Well, where the hell are you? Oh, you're on my hand. You know what I'll do, actually? I'm gonna zoom out for now because it's really hard to keep track. Right. Okay. There's a lot more that I'm pumping into this one. And what I have to do is I have to make sure that it goes down to the bottom. So give it a bit of a massage. Right, let's start on the cranoid itself. So I'm going to go in the areas first of all where I need to just squish the air, just make it a wet surface for now. So I go into all these surfaces that I know are going to be difficult to get once it starts to gel. Okay. And I'm not going to use my fingers this time. <laughs> <laughs> it's quite easy to just push it in with this tool. There we go. I'll do the same here. 
Right, and now that it's pushed in, there, there won't be any bubbles. So I'll leave that upside down for a bit while I pump more into here. <laughs> wow. Ooh, come on. Oh, there's an air bubble. Nice. Okay. Come on, in you go. Okay, I'll let that settle and I'll come back to it and give it another quick massage. Another thing that happens when you do this kind of casting is that what you're doing is you're stretching it, you're pulling the molecules all into the same direction. So even when they freeze and they gel, they've got unidirectional strength because they're all lined up in the same direction together. So they have more strength because they're lined up in the direction of the material, which means that you have stiffness just where you want it and softness and it's lightweight. So it's, it's a composite technique really. When we lay up composite materials, you do it with all the direction of the fibers in the direction of um, strength and stress pattern, flow, flow rate, you know, stress transfer, whatever. So the medusas that I have designed have all been designed to be maximally stiff in the direction they need so that they don't buckle while you're inserting them. They don't buckle lengthwise. You know, they don't buckle lengthwise. They stay stiff while you insert it, but it can squish. Okay, I need to put more in this side because this will start to gel and that's like my thickness control. So I can just keep pumping more in here. Right, I'll wait for the bubbles to start rising out of that. See the colors I've got left? <laughs> So what I do is I touch it on the surface and I pull it because it encourages the long elastomer molecules to line up in the direction where you want the stiffness. So this becomes stiff like a cup, like a sucker. So you need to have softness like a second skin and you want it to also react a bit like a sucker to give that nice grip sensation massage where you need it. I'm still perfecting my technique, you know? It's like an ongoing development. So a Medusa that I produce now will probably be inferior to a Medusa that I produce few months down the road, so 
I'm, I'm just constantly learning new ways of making this better. It's just ongoing and that will improve as I um, get new equipment, which I'm really looking forward to trying to, because I've just thought of a new way to improve quality and yeah, I really want to try it out. Right, I need my pick because to be pushed about a bit. I can see where there's like air bubbles forming. Okay, I'll give it a time to stretch out. Okay, and go back to this one. I'll just take her out and look all around. Oh, she's burst a leak. Ah, oh, no, no good. I don't want that, okay. Okay, let's see if I can just quickly staple her together again. I don't want that, because I'm uh, bursting a leak. Bad, bad, bad. Oh, where's the staples? Ah, oh, there's some staples. Quickly, come on. Do this quickly before it gets slippery and nasty. Okay. There's one there. Just squeeze it in by hand. Yep, yeah, that stopped it. Look. See? Okay, so now I'll just quickly check all the way around to make sure there's no air bubbles. Which is really hard to see now that the mold is kind of gone a milky colour. So what I'll see if I can do is just hmm, if I could inject more, I would. But let's see, pop that bubble, pop, come on. Otherwise I'll end up with a porosity in the join. Okay, that'll do. Okay, jam it back in here. Okay. So, I'm gonna try and pump a little bit more in here if I can. Okay, see if that works a bit. Okay, it looks like bleeding silicone everywhere. Yikes, okay. Oops, I just realized I forgot to spray release agent on the outside. Oh well. Um, oops. <laughs> Might mean it it gets a bit difficult to release. see an air bubble there. Yeah, now there isn't. Just put it upside down on the heat and the idea is the heat going up gels it immediately on the sides as it's creeping down so that when I flip it the other way up to ice it um, I don't get the shallow spots um, where it thins out, where it slumps into the mould and pulls itself off the sides. So that's why I flip it over and put it on the heat like that. And eventually it should be uniformly coated and then I put it in the rotocaster to keep it moving so that there's no slumping and you end up with a nice smooth surface because silicone's really good at smoothing itself out it has, it's really thixotropic, which means that it has very high surface tension. That's an attraction between the molecules. 
they're physically attracted to each other because of their charge or whatever. Um, it's why also you notice that silicone attracts dust. If you, if you have a silicone swim hair or silicone seals, you'll notice that they just suck up dust because they have, the molecules themselves have a high electrostatic charge. And um, that attraction causes a high surface tension in the molecules. So when it's a fluid going over different surfaces and shapes, the surface will try to pull itself into the least surface area or the least curvature, which means that it will smooth over everything. It will just pull itself tight over every surface, which is really cool. Unless you don't know how to control it, and then it's not so cool because you end up with dry spots that just tear. <laughs> mm -hmm. And I, I knew all this mostly because of my composite engineering degree, where there is a lot of um, study about material properties. But also, because of a lot of this was experimental. I didn't know if it was going to work. And I just had to try and find out and find methods to make it work. Ah, crap, and stuff stuck to it. Oh, really? Okay. Come on. So I touch it on the surface, and I'm now having to stretch it physically. So I touch it and stretch it. Uh, I'll put the, um, what do you call it, the, uh, I don't know what you call it, uh, hang on, the adapter, the vestibule here, this black thing in the middle is what I connect the bell to, right? And on the inside of the medusa, it's the vestibule, it's the vestibule of the vagina, that the entrance area. Um, if you suffer with vestibulitis, it's, it's a, a very fibrous area of the vagina full of nerves that can become really painful. And sometimes the only way to get rid of that pain is to surgically remove that tissue. Um, vestibulectomy or something. Um, means that you go completely numb there. But anyway, the Medusa's designed so that there's a physical barrier between those um, sensitive areas to buffer any strike or sensitivity and definitely buffer against um, any friction or sloughing due to fragile cells if the ratio of connective tissue to elastins is a little bit off, as is the case with very flexible people or people with Ehlers-Danlos syndrome. The tissue itself scars differently because it produces different amounts of elastomer that it's elastin that it's supposed to produce, elastin and collagen. So you end up with scar tissue that's actually really weak, that, that tears like wet tissue paper. So that, um, that's one of the things the Medusa is designed to protect against because you don't have to have Ehlers-Danlos syndrome to actually suffer this. Some people will naturally suffer it as they get older because as you lose estrogen, those tissues start to thin and their ratios of moisture and replenishment change and you become more susceptible to sloughing cellular damage because you're not able to renew yourself so easily so imagine if your throat was sore every time you went to eat something because just the movement of food down your throat was tearing off the tissue which actually does happen but your throat, your esophagus, is designed to take it by renewing itself very fast. So, my intestine, for example, they took out the tumour and it healed within four days because um, 
digestive tissue can heal pretty quick. Oh my goodness, what was that? Was that blobbies on me? I don't know what that was. Let me just put a thing in here on this side and a thing in here on this side and squeeze it through because I'm going to have to, let's change the way I'm working a little bit because I need to just push this through. There we go. Yeah, I needed to get some, there we go. So I need to kind of speed up now because this is slumping. So we'll see. I've got 35 mil left. 35 mil left. Oh, this is done. I need to keep this cooking, sorry. These heat up supposedly to 60 degrees, but I found that if you double them up, they get hotter. They increase in temperature to around 80, 90. some more zigzagging come on touch stretch touch come on do it touch stretch that's it okay it's getting a bit more difficult to pull this you know I have to do this quick because every time I stop it starts slumping Brilliant, I've got it on a roll. Um, I love it when it does that. Yeah, so even though it looks very spidery, the silicone will smooth itself out to the, um, what do you call it? Um, minimal curvature minimum curves that it can achieve over a surface area because while it's wet and it's gelling the molecules can move around and adopt the, the position of um, least tension yeah that's what it is okay so now I'm gonna to have to work a little bit upside down now. So, uh, I have to work a little bit upside down because of the way it's moving around a bit. It's kind of slumping a little bit. So I have to just touch it in here and there. This is okay, this is okay. Okay, I'm also using this to look through it the translucency to see where I need to add some extra thickness or anything. Okay. Like in here. Ah, damn it. Come on. Yeah, it's it's not wanting to stretch anymore. Great. Aha, got it. <laughs> got it. <laughs> got it. <laughs> I hope you can't hear the music I'm listening to. <laughs> right now I'm listening to the soundtrack of Interstellar. I like soundtrack music. I just find it so relaxing or epic. I like epic music. Um, yeah, so this is getting really jelly now. So what I'm gonna have to do is just turn this upside down. And the very last thing I'm gonna do is put a bit around the adapter. I'll have to go double-handed on this. Let me just check that it's actually going in the right direction. Okay, I have to 
pull some of these drips over a little bit to encourage them to move in the direction I want them to. Okay. Excellent, okay. Now, there's a little thin bit there. I wanna encourage it to touch. Okay. So let's go double-handed and, okay. Let's see if I can get a dollop here and stretch it across this way and this way. And while it's settling and smoothing itself out, I'll just add an extra rim. Strengthen it a little bit. Come on. It was like literally about to turn. So let's turn it upside down and give it one final smooth down. Jesus Christ, get rid of this music. Oh, what is it? I bet it's that blooming Stranger Things again. No, go away, Stranger Things. There we are. Okay. Wait, it's still on Stranger Things, isn't it? Um, there's a bit of hair. Oh, it's gone now. Okay. Okay. So I'm trying to anywhere it starts to what I call tear, which is it, you know where it starts to pull itself apart or separate into ridges. I just you know tap it a little bit and encourage it not to thin out. It's definitely thin there. Let me get some more in there, okay. Come on, tap, pull, there we go. Tap, pull, there we go. One more in there, tap, pull. Tap, pull, tap, pull, come on. I talk to my work a lot. I talk to myself a lot. I'm highly entertained on my own. <laughs> I know I'm weird. <laughs> well, Turn it upside down and work on it again. And I think I'll have to just add one more stripe to the vestibule. I don't know what you can see there, but... Because I'm, I'm focused on this, I can't really look at the screen. But it's, it's looking good, I'm really pleased with the way it's looking. Oh, there's a thin spot there. I need to get that. Thin spot, okay, where did I see this? Ah, okay, I see it there. Mm, come on, in you go, in you go. There. One more. Come on, in you go. And there, okay. And then finally, one around here. And I'm gonna smooth that thin spot over and then I'm gonna plug it together. Right, okay. It's 
So I'm, I'm using the light to check for thin spots. Turn this upside down, unlock this. Ugh. Okay, get ready to plug this together. And it's cool, isn't it? It's like, it's like playing with food. <laughs> playing with food. Mm. Put one more across the middle. There we go, there we go, okay. So that will smooth itself out but I want to make a nice join with no bubbles in it. Okay. Okay, here goes. Wow, it's in, I think it's in, yep, it's in. Blah, okay, get in here, okay. Okay, I hope that's a bit more square this time yet. Okay, let's turn it upside down and then check it. Okay. It's uh, definitely not going to move, is it? No, it's not going to move. I have to make sure I'm so paranoid this machine has thrown things out so many times. <laughs> and then, you know, my work is you know, I then I have a load of repair work if it does that. So, while that's spinning, I'm going to put this on the fast cure again. Ouch, ouch, ouch. Mm, there was a heart. <laughs> I burned my hand the other day. Was it yesterday? Let's stop this a second. I, I saw something move and it just made me nervous. No, it's definitely not going to move. I'm just paranoid. <laughs> right. I really don't like it jerking around like that. Hmm, not good. But anyway, so that's gonna fast cure. And then what I'll do is I'll get the moulds ready for the next one. Um, no, I won't. I think I'll take a break. <laughs> I'll just take a break because I'm tired. All right, so let's get you out of here. Ooh. I don't even want to tidy up right now. I just want to run upstairs and get some refreshment. Hmm. So yeah, I reckon I'll be able to get Let's see, I've been on here for nearly two hours. Uh, nearly two hours. Um, 
nearly two hours, so I got one more done and I demolded one. I'll be able to get, what time is it now? I don't know, let's see. What time is it now? It is eight o'clock. Uh, four hours until midnight, so I'll be able to get two more done, probably. But that will mean I'll be able to do five shipments on Monday, hopefully. All right. Um, oh, let's put this in handy. Yep, this is messy. Um, I'm gonna just let it cure. So, 